Yeah, kind of. I kind of see VR chat as an escapism thing because I have like 800 hours in this game, which by comparison is not at all a lot because I know most people in this game have like 6,000 hours. Yeah, no, people I got a friend who has like 6,000. Why would you connect escapism to this game? Like, this game is the equivalent of going from a nice, calm sauna to then be shoved into a burning dumpster with machetes and starfish. Just using it say escapism as using drugs, if anything, but you know. I mean, if I want a game that just has my mind escape, I go pl okay, I go play Dying Light on my Switch. <laughs> Why the switch of all things? Your idea, like one thing I noticed is that in real life, no room is going to be as satisfying as the rooms you're in in this game. So I thing I noticed in real life was that I just, every everywhere I went kind of felt the same. It didn't have, I don't know if it's a part of getting older or if it's a part of just overstimulation, but if I go to a church or even to a really like, like a museum or anywhere kind of nice in the real world, even like a coffee house, it just all feels kind of like oatmeal. The world visually isn't as stimulating outside as it is in this game. Game. Only a small percentage of people who watch my videos are actually subscribed, so if you end up liking this video, consider subscribing. As far as VR chat being a form of escapism, I would have to say that it really just depends on the person. For me, I see it as a form of expression. It allows me to create things that you could never see in real life. This is one of my more optimized creations. This lad is a bit bit more intense. No, these are called a volley. The amount of times I've walked into a lobby and be like, and hear people just be like, bro, where'd you get that? And I tell them I make it, and they're just like, wait, what? What brings me joy the most is hearing that, whoa, when your avatar loads. What? Oh, that's so much better than the thing I could <laughs> do with Unity. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, wow. Yeah, it's super cool. It does It does get kind of funny sometimes because I'll be wandering around in the wild and I'll find one of my avatars on somebody and, and I'm just like, oh, oh, oh okay, cool. <laughs> one of our strongest senses is uh, being in an environment. So when you're looking at a screen, of course, you have lots of information. There's moving things. And if you're like listening to music, you can close your eyes and feel. But you don't feel like you're actually in an environment. And I think that's a very, very huge part of being an animal that lives in a three-dimensional world is knowing I turn around, there's objects here. I turn here there's somebody there and it's actually your mind is subconsciously while you're processing all of the different elements around you like just the process like of your um it's basically like uh, your kinesthetic senses are being rewritten yeah it's well i think the the act of like processing a world like your mind actually weaves something that feels real it, it does like it's called virtual reality but like our brain doesn't know it's virtual i we know it is but the, like the process of actually remembering and keeping track of things around you, that's something that feels very real. I just realized that that clock is actually the real time one on the stove. What? Shit, you're right. In psychology, I love like that detailing. One of the first things like you learn in psychology is the uh, the idea of object permanence. That your your brain, like one of the like a, a two year old kid or something, like a two year old kid, you put a ball on a table and two cups over it and then you sort of pick the cup up and the ball is still in the cup and the two and a half year old will be like where, where'd it go what the, this makes no sense and so there's something that happens subconsciously where, where we're keeping track of the things around us and I think many of these subconscious processes you build up enough of them and those sort of feed into what you experience and so if you have many of your subconscious processes processing things in the background and keeping track of things you, you get enough of those going it feels like you're actually processing a real world like if you've heard of simulation theory like we could be in a simulation and we wouldn't know it because we're just all we we're just brains floating connected to a nervous system and Please so don't say that that messed with my brain i think the thing that makes this game so appealing to others is just the fact that you can be whatever you want to be and i think that's the biggest draw for both vr and vr chat in general while people are a great <laughs> draw to this game half the fun is just this freaky world you could find like look at this place we are standing inside of the friggin lights show oh oh shit that's this cool this is what vr chat is about beautiful yeah. beautiful that's kind of content trendy. that people have created over the years and to think this is just one world out of literal millions of worlds that people upload every day you will never see this entire game that's why people play it for so long is because they love exploring and sure the majority of worlds are terrible there's a lot of worlds that are purely there as just a joke or they're just really badly made. But every now and again, you'll find a gem. And those are what makes this game worth it. And especially with younger people, it would be, you know, this is 
probably the only cool piece of technology that you have because you can't afford a PC. Like the headsets became affordable. And so you have this weird dynamic between people who are using it for escapism and then people who regular people tend to be a lot more rude than many uh, neurodivergent individuals. You have this overarching, almost returning theme of all the issues in society that these people were escaping are now doubly looked because you have this congealed, now you're in a room with 16, 15 voices. Nobody has to behave politely. And so it's a weird, it's almost people who are intending to escape. And in fact, many of the social issues that they were bothered by have returned to them three or four times more intensely on this platform. For the first month or so when I started playing this game, I actually was very paranoid about the kinds of avatars I would wear. Uh, when I actually first started playing this game, I had a lot of very negative notions about different communities, both in VR chat and just in the world in general. However, through playing this game and actually talking with people, I began to break some of those notions, so to speak. Another thing that I was worried about personally was looking at me the biggest freaking hypocrite on the world, but I was worried about the furry community as well. However, actually getting to know people that are them and knowing what is and isn't okay as far as they're concerned it helps me to be comfortable with what I enjoy. It seems that people left like a lot of real world problems to come into this game. I think there was before COVID because this game came out before COVID. So there were people who were living in very isolated sort of lifestyles where this was their primary way of socializing. And then a lot of people who this was because they couldn't go out during the pandemic, this became their primary way of socializing. So we had an interesting dichotomy between people who actually were sort of escaping from everyday life because they didn't relate either. They were trans, autistic, couldn't afford to live in a nice area, et cetera, et cetera, family problems. Oh, that's that's oh, yeah, actually a genuine thing is taking, taking naps here in chill worlds is something that a lot of people find relaxing, myself included, actually. You, you, you pop me in a rainy world that has like thunder effects and I'm out like that. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, I used to sleep in VR a ton, but then like, I don't know, life took over. And so it became less and less of, this, of escapism because I kind of don't use this as much. But this guy has gotten me back into it in the last like week and we've been hanging out nightly, which is pretty nice. cool. And I was just like, hey, you know what? Screw it. Let's see if this game's as crazy as I've seen on the on YouTube. And then I was just like, oh God, it can be even worse. <laughs> well, like my point is this: you find all kinds of people here, and the range of emotions you can get on the scale will be from zero to oh God, burn my brain in acid, please. It's everything from genuinely enjoying this more than real life to not having a job and literally having nothing else to do all day. There's a lot of different features that I was about to play say. into that fact. Yeah, I, I just got home from work and I just hopped on. Myself, no. I am a machinist that works basically 10 hour days every day and I use this game to unwind. I've had a VR for like maybe two weeks now. Honestly, the VR is awesome. I love it. It's like I, I still play on just like my normal PC still like with my friends, but this is great. Like it mainly to play play like alone just some alone time find some new people like just it's been wonderful though like like the tracking and just like the depth lets you like feel like you're actually here and it's just been 10 out of 10. kindness is contagious when you are kind you inspire others be the spark spreading kindness merchandise available now